welcome to Facts on Four, a monthly show hosted by me, Susan DeCastro. I'm the Ward 4 City Councilor on Brockton Community Access, and this is the show for June 2021. Welcome. I, I want to first uh, report on some important city news, and that is during the month of June, the City Council undertook its largest job and we approved a city budget for the coming fiscal year, FY22, which begins on July 1st. We approved a budget of about $493 million, and it represents an increase of $43.5 million over the FY21 budget. Um, it begins, as I said, July 1st of this year. We held three nights of meetings. We heard from every department head at City Hall. And we also held public comment, I believe eight, I think 10 residents signed up and eight came and spoke to us. And the City Council gave final approval of the budget on June 14th, uh, two Mondays ago. The best thing about this budget is it restores funds, needed funds, to the budget of the Brockton Public Schools. And a lot of these funds are coming via the Student Opportunity Act, which was passed by the Massachusetts State Legislature earlier this year. Um, it's allowing the school department to recover from 10 years of budget cuts. Finally, we don't have a lean budget. And Brockton Public Schools is funded to begin to address COVID slide, the slide of our children as a result of the COVID pandemic, and also to address pre-existing gaps in student achievement. We'll be hiring more teachers. We'll begin to build our own bus fleet. We'll be hiring guidance counselors and mental health professionals, paraprofessionals to help our children. We will be updating curriculum resources and lots more. Um, they'll be restoring full intramurals and athletics after school and summer programs. And there'll be tutors and mentors and student programs. I'm so thrilled that this is going through and that our children will benefit from it. Um, another thing that has happened recently in Brockton, uh, last week actually, is we celebrated Juneteenth, June 19th. It was proclaimed a state holiday, and it was celebrated in the city with a day off for city workers. Um, it, it's, it's long overdue that we celebrate Juneteenth, both in the city, in the state, and in the United States of America. So that's a wonderful move forward for us. Um, let's see. As of yesterday, Brockton remained in the green zone as to incidents of COVID cases. There were 24 active cases yesterday. Five were in the hospital and one was in the intensive care unit. The confirmed total of cases in Brockton since all of this began is 14,188 cases. And we've had a total of 434 residents die as the result of COVID-19. The numbers are getting better. We ask you to keep it up. Vaccine. Get we strongly suggest that you vaccine. Please consider having the vaccine if you have not always already done so. Um, the mask mandates are down for the most part. However, we ask that you wear a mask if you're in a crowd and in many buildings. I, I wear my mask on a, a necklace around my neck so I don't have to touch it much and so that I don't lose it or misplace it. Um, also, we wanted you to know, and important on these hot days, the Manning Pool, located at 470 Forest Avenue behind Brockton High School, is going to reopen on June 25th. And there's a small fee to use it. In addition, the Cosgrove Pool, located at 270 Crescent Street, is reopening on July 2nd, and it is free to the public for use. So that's my city news. Now, in Ward 4 in particular, since this is Facts on 4, um, Last month, the ZBA considered a proposed development in a former factory building located at 15 Rutland Square. Now, three sides of this building are located in Ward 3, but one side of it is located in Ward 4. And so I, I got involved with um, 
Ward 3 Councillor Dennis Aneri. And several months ago, we held a neighborhood meeting and we've kind of been keeping an eye on this project. Well, the ZBA considered a use variant since it's a change from an industrial to a residential use. And the variance was approved by, I believe, a vote of four to one. The Traffic Commission last month approved a, re a request located in Ward 4 for no parking signage at the corner of Hemlock Street and McGrath Avenue in Ward 4A. The Traffic Commission also approved a request for a stop sign on the northbound side of Churchill Avenue at the corner of Clifton Avenue in Ward 4. Now, if, if you're interested in signage or um, something to go in front of the Traffic Commission and you need my help, give me a call. I'm the Ward 4 Counselor, Susan DeCastro. My phone number is 508-897-1314. So at this point, I'd like to just speak about a few things that you may not know that I, I notice as I drive around Ward 4 and the city. And the first is on road verges. And I have props to show you pictures. So this is a road verge. It's the skinny strip of land. It could be grass, it could not be grass, it could have trees or bushes on it, but it's between the sidewalk and the street. Um, verges have many other names depending upon where you live, and that includes curb strips, beside walk, a berm, a curb lawn, a devil strip, an out lawn, or a sidewalk strip. Um, verges are treated differently depending upon where you live. In some communities, in some states and countries, Australia comes to mind, the community DPW takes care of maintenance of those verges, cuts the grass, trims the trees, and all that stuff. In the city of Brockton, and indeed in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, road verges belong to the property owner. So they're, they're, they go with the, the house that they're in front of. Um, so the owner is responsible for care and maintenance of the road verge, and it's subject to a sidewalk easement in favor of the city, but that strip of grass is to be maintained by the, the homeowner or by the tenant, as the case may be. And so as I drive around Ward 4, I see some road verges, and it's interesting because they're in front of, in many instances, beautifully maintained lawns, and yet the grass growing or the weeds growing in some instances, on the road verge is more than a foot tall. And so we'd like you to know that that is the responsibility of the owner. We'd like, we'd like to see it trimmed down. Um, it just looks so much nicer and it makes the neighborhoods look nicer, which makes everyone happy. In the worst case scenario, the city could get involved um, and it's possible for the city to fine a homeowner for nuisance for failure to cut that road verge. Um, but that's not what we want to do. We want to see the properties maintained by the owners. And so I gently bring it to your attention. Perhaps you know someone who's not aware of this. Not everyone is aware. Um, and related to the road verge is having a tree growing in it. And I have one example of a tree that the well of the tree where, where it's planted is just full of other plant growth and weeds, as the case may be. And that also needs to be cleaned out. It needs to be kept neatly. Um, it can be a fire hazard, a uh, cigarette being thrown out of a car, as the case may be. So I bring these road verge, um, this information to you with the best of intentions. We just want to keep Brockton and Ward 4 in particular neat and clean and looking good. It, um, it enhances the quality of life of everyone. So something else I wanted to make you aware of was outdoor fires. This is a chimenea, and this is a fire pit. And both of them, to use them in your yard, requires an outdoor fire permit. Let's see, it's called a permit for an open fire. And you can obtain that from the fire department and you can get information on it on the city's website. You would go to uh, look under the fire department, under city departments, 
And from there, you'd find in the left-hand column, Resources. Click on that, and you'll get Permits and Regulations. Click on that, and you'll get Chimneys, Chimneers, Fire Pits, and Outdoor Fireplaces. There's a $25 fee that has to be paid with an application for a fire permit. And once the permit is allowed, it's good for one year. Okay. Some of the highlights of the conditions and restrictions that attach to the permit are that it's valid for use of an open fire between 5 p.m. and midnight. The city does not allow any fires in, in, in a fire pit or one of these devices after midnight each night. It must be extinguished by midnight. And also you should be aware of in any of these devices or a trash can, the burning of yard waste, leaves, vines, evergreen needles, brush, trash, construction materials, branches smaller than three inches in diameter, garbage, paper products, anything other than firewood is not allowed by state code or law. And so it's forbidden. You can't burn those things. And I've had several calls since I became the Ward 4 City Councilor about burning in backyards, and we, we cannot allow that. The city is too densely populated. In most instances, the houses are too close together to allow burning of any of those materials. So again, you need a, a permit, which is good for a year, if you want to use one of these devices to have a fire on your property. Okay, so there's that. And then I recently was answering questions on social media. Um, they, were, they were on topics of general interest, and so I'd like to share them with you. Um, I think they're helpful for all residents, not just Ward 4. Um, the first one is I was asked about um, fireworks on the 4th of July. Um, a resident wrote and said that last year her neighborhood sounded like a bombing zone. What can the city do to alleviate this situation this year? Um, and it's a very good question. It's the right time of year to be asking it. Earlier this year, the city council passed a noise ordinance. And in the noise ordinance, it sets a threshold decibel limit for how loud we allow sound that's uh, emitted um, in the public area. And we, we understand that the Bruckton police have obtained some decibel meters and they will be equipping and training their, their personnel to use them um, when they're patrolling the sectors of the city, especially in the evenings during the summer. Last month I met with Mayor Robert Sullivan as well as Police Chief Emmanuel Gomes to talk about noise issues from fireworks and loud gatherings. I'm told that there will be patrols on this summer to address these issues. Um, and the fire department, I believe, is also going to be getting involved around the 4th of July. Um, many constituents call me about noise issues in Ward 4. And this is my standard advice. You have to keep calling the police department's business line, which is 508-941-0200 to report noise issues in your neighborhood. And it's best to provide the police with the exact address of the source of the noise. You don't have to give your name to the operator who answers the phone. But you should ask for and write down the name of the operator you speak with, as well as the time that you speak with them. The police department, they're smart. They have to prioritize calls that they received. But I've been re assured repeatedly that they will respond to every call that comes in. You should, if something, if, if noise persists in the neighborhood, especially after 11 p.m., engage your neighbors to make calls as well. And if you don't get relief, call your city councilor for help. That's what we're here for. Um, I know that the loud gatherings have already begun and the fireworks in Brockton because I've been getting calls on them. You know, by its nature, noise calls require immediate attention. So I'd like to suggest that you not post on C Click Fix on the city's website about fireworks or loud parties or noise disturbances in your neighborhood. And I also would call the police tip line about it because they're not going to get those messages and respond to them promptly. 
a noise call requires as close to immediate attention as the police department can give it, and so therefore you need to call the business line. Um, sometimes it's helpful to use your phone to record what you're hearing inside your home from noise that's sourced outside your home. Um, and the best thing of all, and I, I've been trying to urge neighbors and people to do this, is to talk with your loud neighbor directly before calling the police. Make the effort to speak to them, to engage with them, because it could be as simple as having them turn down the music volume just a bit to make it more livable for the neighborhood. Most neighbors don't want to bother their, their neighbors. They just want to enjoy their guests and, and have fun. And after the, the time we've had with the COVID-19 pandemic, you can't blame anyone for that. Some people don't realize how loud something really is in the next yard or the next block, as is sometimes the case. So please consider speaking to your neighbors before you call the police. And um, call the police frequently until you, you, you get, um, get attention, OK? So that's the first question that I, I responded to. Then there was another question about the criteria for having your street repaved. Street paving in the city of Brockton is paid for with state funds that are provided under Chapter 90 of the Mass General Laws. And I should tell you, yesterday the State House approved just a little more than $2 million for Brockton to use for roads and bridges and this kind of infrastructure work. Um, Brockton has 300 miles of roads, and there's never enough funding for the DPW to address all of the bumpy roads in the city. Um, earlier this year, and actually in January of each year, the DPW asks the city councilors to submit a list of a few streets they would like to see paved. The city councilors who represent wards list streets in their own wards, and the councilors at large list streets in, in any, throughout the city, any part of the city. The DPW tells us that they will address at least one bumpy road with repaving. And depending upon the funding received from the city, we may get another street done. So make sure your city councilor knows about the condition of your street. You can send them an email. You can call. Um, all of this contact information is on the city website under city councilors. Um, so that's street repaving. And finally, I was asked the question, um, if, if, a, if the head if a, if a city employee heads multiple city departments, do they get a salary from all three departments? And that's a really interesting question. So to answer it, I took a look at the city budget book you know, from last week's deliberations, and I figured out that it depends. The Parks Commissioner's salary is paid 80% from the Parks Department Enterprise Fund and 20% from the Cemetery Department. But the DPW commissioner's salary is paid 100% from the commissioner's department and not in any way paid from engineering, highway, maintenance, water, or the sewer funds, which are all supervised by the DPW commissioner. Um, so it, it depends, and it's a very good question. We would not have had occasion to, to discuss that during the budget hearings. So one smart person brought that one up. But I hope that helps for you to understand um, just a little bit about um, who pays for what in the city budget. Let's see. Um, I'm, I'm going to close now. Um, this is going to be a short, a short program for the month of June. I'll have more during July. And I, I, want, to, I want to wish you all the happiest of summers and urge you to do something that you don't usually do. Take a ride, go somewhere you've never been, swim in the city pools. Um, there's a wonderful gallery that I actually passed on my drive down here to Brockton Cable, the Enzo Flats Gallery. And, and it's in the corner of a uh, building at Montello and Center Streets. And it's got a beautiful collection of art. It's all glass so you can see it from the street as you drive by. I understand it's open nearly every day. So why not do something different and go in and check out the artwork there? Thank you for watching. 
This is Facts on Four. I am Ward 4 City Councilor Susan DeCastro. It's my pleasure to, prevent, to present this with information about the city, about Ward 4, and about uh, different issues or concerns that you might not think about. If you have questions or comments, you may call me at 508-897-1314. If you'd like to email me, my email address is snacastro at cobma.us. Thank you very much. Have a good day.